Um, so I'm on page 20, where Peter is now beginning to implement the beetle. And the first thing he does is he implements the add body method. Keep, did you notice, by the way, all of these are alphabetized? With the exception of the constructor, which comes first, all the constructors come first, and then he alphabetizes everything else. That's how the order of, that's the order of things there. So he goes ahead, though, and implements the add body method for a particular reason. Um, he has a comment here for add body, which is try to add a body and return whether this succeeded. Succeeded. So what do we know about the add body method? It returns a boolean and it has no parameters. So we say public boolean add body. We know it returns a boolean, it's called add body, and it has no parameters. So we got all of that from this line of the UML diagram. And there's something just a little tricky going on here. And what's going on here is that if we don't have a body, then we want to add one to the beetle. Okay, so if we currently don't have a body in our hands, we would like one. If we already have a body, then this should fail. So there's two things going on. One, we're going to be changing the value, poten we're potentially going to be changing the value of the body variable from uh, false to true. If it's already true, then we don't need to do anything. So we would say, uh, if if there is a body, right? Because body is a boolean value. It could be true or false. So if this is true, and I'm going to fill this in because I know I have an else. All right. If there's a body, then we can't pick up another one, so we return false. All right, We're building a little beetle. If we already have a body, we don't add another. So this method returns false. If we don't have a body, that is, if body is false, then we want to set it to true to say we now have a body. We'll say this. And we'll return that this method was successful. So in both branches of the if, we have a return. I should be able to compile and get things to be successful. Notice the kind of compiler error that results if I forget one of those return statements. It tells me it's missing a return because it's possible that we could end up here, in which case it doesn't say return. So we'll say return true. All right. Do you see that? It's possible one or the other of these two branches will execute. Um, I'm not sure what I prefer here in terms of style. I think maybe we'll talk about that in class, and you can tell me if you prefer, prefer this style of if statement with the bracket here, or if you prefer it on its own line. I know I prefer methods like this. That takes us through page 20. The next step that Peter introduces us to is the toString method. Now, this is a fairly long method. But, and in fact, I, I want, well, no, I'll go ahead and write this method now because it's going to be the way I want to test what I'm doing. Because right now, I don't have a lot of way to test this. I can create a new beetle. I can come down here and I can say, well, I can inspect it. I can see it's false, 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 blah, 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 all kinds of false. I could come in here and say, add body. And it says, all right, I added a body. And if I come back to the inspector, look at that. There is now a body. If I invoke add body again, it should return false because I already have one. So it returns false because I already have a beetle body. Good. The next